Hello everyone, I am Siddharth and welcome to the fourth tutorial on simulation of electronic circuits and today we are going to be studying four different types of passive analog filters namely the low pass filter, the high pass filter, the band pass filter and the band stop filter. Now these filters are called passive because they do not require any external source of power and they are called analog because they operate only on continuous time signals. Now these filters are really simple to construct so let's get started off with the low pass filter. So the first thing we need is our continuous time signal. So click on generators and select sign and in series with that we need a resistor and set this to 1 kilo ohm and in parallel we are going to add a capacitor now in order to measure the voltage at the output end of the circuit we are going to need something called the voltage probe so click on this little icon over here with a V and add it on the output side of the circuit and there you have it our circuits ready now in order to analyze filter circuits we need something called the frequency analysis so click on graphs and select frequency and draw a box here and that should open your frequency response now double click on your graph and for reference select your continuous time signal generator mine is called R1 and drop your voltage probe into the graph like that and once you've done that right click on the graph and select simulate graph and there you have it this is how the frequency response of a low pass filter looks like now let's study the circuit a little more in detail now you know that the reactance of a capacitor is given by 1 by 2 pi fc now what this means is as the frequency increases the reactance keeps decreasing so at one particular frequency this capacitor behaves like a short and in order to determine that frequency there's another formula and that is f cutoff equals 1 by 2 pi rc now in my circuit I have chosen R equals 1 kilo ohm and C equals 1 microfarad so if you substitute these values in this formula you're going to get F cutoff equals to 160 Hertz now let's expand this graph and try and find 160 Hertz yeah and the gain corresponding to this value is approximately minus 3 decibels now this value is unique because what it means is the power has fallen by exactly half and in order to prove that we're going to need another formula and that is gain equals 10 log power out by power in and if you substitute power out equals half power in you're going to get gain equals minus 3 decibels and that's exactly what the graph shows us now let's go back to the circuit now why do you think we need a resistor in series well for that we need to go back to our first formula again that is f cutoff equals 1 by 2 pi rc now let's say i want to design a filter for 160 hertz and i do not use any value of resistor so let's say i substitute the value of copper that's around 20 nano ohms and and I try to find the value of C I will get something like 50,000 farads yeah I, in fact I just calculated it and designing a capacitor with the value of 50,000 farads is going to be impossible and not only that this capacitor is going to be extremely huge so just by adding in a resistor of 1 kilo ohm you can actually bring down the value of the capacitor now one last thing is what type of capacitor to choose 
Now, you know, capacitors can be classified as electrolytic and ceramic capacitors. And electrolytic capacitors can go up to a thousand microfarad, whereas ceramic capacitors can go up to 0 0.1 microfarad. So, let's say you've been asked to design a low pass filter, you're obviously going to choose an electrolytic capacitor because of its higher value. But this is actually a disadvantage because if you look at the construction of an electrolytic capacitor, this is how an electrolytic capacitor looks like. You notice that it's basically a winding of two metal plates with the dielectric in between. And because of this winding, it has a small element of inductance present in it. So at very high frequencies, this inductance comes into play. So instead of behaving like a short, it uh, actually behaves like a very high resistance. So in case you've been asked to design um, a low pass filter for high values of uh, frequency, you're going to choose a ceramic capacitor and not an electrolytic capacitor. So that's it for the low pass filter. Now let's move on to the high pass filter. Now I already designed the circuit to save time. And this is how the circuit looks like. Uh, now this uh, the high pass filter basically does the opposite of a low pass filter. What it does is it only allows frequencies above the cutoff frequency to pass through the circuit and remaining frequencies are blocked by this series capacitor now the cutoff formula is the same so let me simulate this graph now I told you the cutoff frequency has the same formula and I have chosen the same values for C and R so if you yeah, and this is how the frequency response looks like. So since the values of C and R are same, the cutoff frequency is still 160 Hz. And corresponding to this point, the gain is minus 3 decibels, which is the same. So this is the high pass filter. Now, if you combine the low pass filter and the high pass filter in series, what you're going to get is something called the band pass filter. Now what the band pass filter does is it basically allows frequencies only in a particular band to pass through. Now this is the low pass filter circuit and this is the high pass filter circuit. and I'm going to connect them in series. Now let me just change the values of the capacitance. Now let's analyze this circuit so we're having a small problem over here Yeah, so this is how the frequency response of a band pass filter looks like. Now, what this tells you is it allows signals only with cutoff frequency above the high pass and below the low pass to go through the circuit, and the signals of remaining frequencies are all blocked. Now, let's move to the last circuit, and that's the band stop filter. I already constructed this circuit as well. Now this circuit consists of a low pass filter in parallel with the high pass filter. And if you simulate this graph, you'll get something like this. Now what the band stop filter does is it blocks all frequencies 
in the range determined by the low pass filter and the high pass filter it basically does the opposite of what a band pass filter does so that's all for today uh, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and found it educational if you have any questions you can always mail me or comment down below and don't forget to subscribe because I'll be adding more tutorials in the future thank you and see you next time